guys welcome to the lesson number two of our pine script course from pine readers and in this video we're going to talk about how the script is structured in pine script so whenever you go into the pine editor and start writing your code there is a specific structure that you need to follow in order to program your indicator correctly the first thing that you need to follow is the version directive so the first statement that you will give to your pine editor in the script is the version directive where you define which version you want to use and that is done by writing at the rate version equal to the version number the latest version of the pine script is version 5 which we will be using in our course but there are previous versions as well which are version 1 2 3 and 4 the version 5 is the latest one and it came with a lot of new features which we will need in order to program our indicators the second thing in the structure of a Pine script is the indicator strategy or library annotation call. So here we define what are we working on. After defining what version we want to use, we define what are we working on. Are we working on an indicator, a strategy, or a library? In this case, here I'm writing the indicator, and we can we and if we are working on let's say a strategy, what we will do is let me just uncomment this. Then we will write a strategy. And let me comment this and this is how like strategy will look like and if we want to use the library we'll just comment this and I'll do this so you don't need to write all of these and comment them I have just written them for example but we'll need to write at least one of them in order to write the script okay and in this case as I said we're working on an indicator so I'm, I'm just gonna go here and I'm, I'm going to uncomment the indicator. The third thing in the structure of Pine script is the series of statements which implement the script's algorithm. So here we are defining what our script is, what are different variables, and what are different calculations that our script needs to do. And these series of statements are basically what our indicator works on. Okay, these are kind of the back end of our indicator. And after that, the next thing is the output function call. So the output function call gives us the output of our script, what we have calculated above in the function, okay? And the most commonly used output function call is the plot function. Uh, using the plot function, we can plot a drawing line or something on the chart. So an indicator, whenever we write an indicator, it must have at least one output function call okay of uh, if it does not have any output function call the where the script will not work it will give us an error and similar is the case with a strategy in the strategy we must have at least one strategy call to execute the order so let's say we are working on a strategy and what we'll do is i'm just gonna co comment this indicator and uncomment this strategy and then this is an example of a strategy call strategy output call so an indicator must have uh, an output call in the fun in the form of something that plots on the chart or returns us some value but uh, and, and a strategy must have an output function call which executes an order which opens an order okay another thing is that you cannot use strategy calls inside an indicator because if you're writing an indicator indicator does not have ability to open and close orders in the market in order to do that in order to open and close orders you need to use the strategy function so this one here this whole script is an example of exponential moving average and this is an indicator so I'm just gonna comment this and I'm just gonna comment the strategy call and uncomment the indicator call because this is an indicator and then when I save it and add this to chart, it's gonna plot the exponential moving average. Okay, here we can see the exponential moving average on the chart. In order to change the color or width of the line, I can just go into settings panel and then I can give different types of input which I want to use. And in the style, I can you change the thickness and the color of the line. And let me just hit okay. So this is how a Pine script code is structured, and this is the structure that you'll be following along with me in this course i hope you like this video if you have any questions please comment down below and i would love to answer them also if you're new to our channel please hit the subscribe button so that you'll be the first one to know whenever we upload new content 
see you guys in the next video thank you